I'm oil historian Mike Chappelle. Today, June 4th, 2011, I'm interviewing Dr. Jesse Roth for the Endocrine Society at its annual meeting being held this year at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center. It's hard to imagine now that we, somebody had to discover receptors, but we really did. And um, in, in the um, olden days, nowadays, if you say, I discovered a new hormone, the first question that a graduate student turns is, well, what's the receptor? So given that hormone receptor is such a pair, it's hard to imagine that a long time, you know, not so long ago, there were no receptors. And um, you say to me, well, well, what were they thinking? <laughs> And so uh, they used to think that the hormones went right into the cell. If you put a, a cell or tissue in with hormone, uh, some enzymes would get turned on or turned off. And so they assumed that uh, hormones like vitamins, they would go into the cell, they would find the enzymes, and then the combination of the hormone with the enzyme would do what it's supposed to do. So um, we, we were kind of lucky. We, we, were, we were a little unhappy with that uh, and so my buddy and I, Ira Pest and I, it was 1963, we had just gotten to the NIH, and our boss there, we had both been doing some nice work and uh, on other things, and my boss said to me, he said, you know, Jesse, you could keep doing that. Uh, that, that's a good way to go, but, you know, this is a special time, a special place. Why don't you think of the best thing you could possibly work on? And so that's when we started to work on the receptors, and the question we were asking is, well, let's say insulin gets to a muscle cell and the muscle cell starts to take up glucose. How does the muscle cell know that insulin is there? The, 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 the muscle is being bathed with 10 million different molecules, and only one of them is insulin. How does it know the insulin is there? And that was what um, got us to say, well, there must be something there that's really recognizing insulin from everything else. And we thought, well, that must be the, going to be the receptor. Now, initially, we thought it might be inside the, the cell, but in fact, we started to play around with it, and it's clear that um, it was out on the cell surface. And that was a surprise to everybody. Uh, everybody had assumed that it was, uh, the hormones just went right in. And uh, once we were able to uh, uh, convince ourselves, first thing, you know, when you do research, the first thing you have to do is convince yourself that you're right. And then you have to figure out how you can convince the world that you're right. <laughs> so by, by about... Uh, we started in 1963. By 1965 and 1966, we knew we were right, but it took us another three or four years to get the system to work well so that we could prove to the world. We were also very lucky that once we did, they, they, they accepted it. So by 1969 and 1970, we could actually label hormones with radioactivity. We could get preparations of receptors from cells. We could put the two of them together and show that they really were receptors. And, um, and what we did at first with ACTH, uh, adrenocorticotrophic hormone on adrenal cells. But uh, we did that one because we, we, again, were guessing that this was a simpler system to work with. In those days, you could hardly ever get any pure hormones, and that's why you had to pick systems where you could get them. Nowadays, every hormone, you get as much as you want if you have a, you know, a little bit of money. Uh, in those days, they were hard to find. So you could get insulin, uh, that was available, and ACTH was one of the others. And that was also, they didn't know the structures of a lot of the hormones. So we were lucky. We took ACTH because you could buy a lot of it relatively cheap. And you could, you, if you knew if you put a radioactive iodine onto the molecule, you knew exactly where it was going to go. And you knew how to purify it. And so we knew a lot about ACTH. And then we picked the adrenal because most hormones, once you broke the cells, you didn't know what happened. But Sutherland, a few years before, had discovered that a lot of the hormones, when you put them in with cells, would activate adenylate cyclase. So with the adrenal, you could break the cell, get cell membranes that still had adenylate cyclase. So when you put in ACTH, it would turn on the adenylate cyclase. You knew there had to be the receptor there. And it was that combination that allowed us to really do the first one. Um, once we did that one, then the rest were a cakewalk. We did the insulin receptor uh, almost immediately after that. And our neighbors next door, upstairs, all got excited. They did their own pet hormones. And so within, within a few years, everybody was doing uh, receptors to hormones using basically the, the concepts and the, the techniques that we, we showed for ACTH and then insulin. Burson and Yalo were both very active members of the Endocrine Society. 
The second presentation, the one that really brought it together in the growth hormone back in 1963, was a symposium here at the... Um, uh, it, it really, we were uh, paraded at the... Uh, Burson presented the work and paraded us as the Stars Network. Uh, year after year, we would come back and present our work at this uh, meeting. Um, I was on the Council of the Endocrine Society. Uh, uh, so we've been, you know, all this work that I've done has been richly rooted in the Endocrine Society. We come to the meetings every year. Um, we participated in the workshops. And uh, so I would say this is really clear one of our major homes uh, here at the Endocrine Society. This has been an exciting meeting. First of all, to be interviewed for you via history. Um, going to the awards dinner, I've been to the awards dinner on multiple occasions. I have three awards from the Endocrine Society, the junior, the middle, and the senior awards. Uh, so I've been to those award dinners before. I have nominated colleagues and friends who've worked with me who've gotten, so young, many of my youngster colleagues have now gone on to get major awards from the Endocrine Society. And I was there last night when, again, one of my colleagues now just got the Auerbach uh, lectureship. Uh, and as I said, one of the mentees of a mentee got an award. So no, we're, um, we've really been part of it. We did that last night. Uh, he's going to give a major address tomorrow, and I'll be there to uh, cheer him on. And um, no, no, we're very much at home here, and uh, the kinships are... Uh, one of the great things about endocrinology is it's a very friendly field. The people like each other. And even when we're competing, it's a friendly competition. It's a, uh, it's a sportsman-like uh, uh, competition. We have great... Um, and I think the mentoring is one of the things that's done it, is that uh, most of us... Burst and Yow came on, you know, they, they sprang from uh, Zeus's head. Uh, most of us were mentored and tutored, and I just had unselfish, devoted, talented tutors. And I hope that, I, I think I've inculcated that in the people who worked in my group, and they continue, it's a pleasure for me to go to their groups and see them uh, mentoring their young people in that same kind of enthusiastic, unselfish commitment to their success.